Hey gardening friends, it's April 13th. It's like 55 degrees. It's uh, in the evening. So I don't think I've ever done a tour of my front yard. And spring kind of sprang over the weekend. We had some unusually warm weather last week. It was actually like 84 degrees on Saturday. And everything is just kind of popped out. Actually, my Nan King cherry is actually almost done. Look at this. This was full of blooms on Saturday and they're already spent. So that was, well, and then we got some rain. We had some pretty heavy rain Sunday, Monday. So hopefully some of the bumblebees got to it and uh, we'll get a little bit of fruit. Um, the dogwood, this is, oh, pagoda dogwood. This is one of the varieties, the leaves actually are like a cream and gold variegation. And then I have this little crinolis. This is a seedling one and it's just so, so different from the other ones in my garden. Got some daffodils that was snowdrops. A lot of spring bulbs in the front here. Uh, hyacinth, I just saw bumblebee at the hyacinth. So I got my wildlife habitat sign up. And one thing I did this year, you can see them. I, you know, the bed in the summer is full of coneflowers and bee balm. So to help the bees, I basically cut back the stalks, but left the bottom foot to 18 inches. That's supposed to give cavity nesting bees a place to uh, they'll actually make little nests in these stalks then. So that's a coneflower. So this is a very springy garden. I love spring bulbs. Uh, this is a star magnolia. And I don't do too much cleaning up of leaf litter or leaves anymore. I'm trying to leave that in the garden bulbs and things can still come up through it as long as it's not too deep but the leaves you know they de decompose they feed the soil they actually feed the decomposing microorganisms they're good habitat for insects to hide in and I don't have to use as much mulch so we're gonna give that a try also have some ground covers in here uh, daylilies for color later in the season. There's been some bugs in here. And this is a west exposure, so it is evening, so my shadow keeps popping into view. This is actually a tough spot in the winter because we have prevailing westerlies. So I have not ever had good luck with evergreens out here. Plus I'm also only about 20 feet from the road, so a lot of road salt. A variety of daffodils. A lot of the peach colored ones are in here. Um, I do have some peonies planted along in here. I don't think any, oh, the ones by the steps are popping up. So we'll have peonies this spring. Just give you a close up of star magnolia this is like the first year in quite a few that it hasn't gotten frosted then on this side this is my giant ironweed I'm leaving the stalks up i just like like it for interest i'll cut it back in a couple weeks when i get tired of it Another star magnolia. It's not as old as the one on the other end. This one's been in the ground for a couple of years, but I wanted the pair of them. Got a spirea here. Spirea uh, always looks nice because the leaves are so bright. Um, more daffodils, iris, hyacinths. So here we have uh, bee balm and you can see that the stems to the bee balm are hollow, so those might be good for 
cavity nesting bees. Um, so I have a lot of glory of the snow in here that's naturalized. That's kind of at the end. And tulips are coming on. Like I said, things are really early. The Nankings, I don't know that I've ever had them open this early, but there's a bumble working the Nanking. And actually, Saturday, there were half a dozen different types of pollinators on, on this Nanking cherry. Not a native tree, but the pollinators were loving it. Um, and it's almost, it's almost done now. I think the rain kind of beat it. So these are cone flowers coming up. So everything is really coming out right now. And then we move around to the south side. So this is a southern exposure. My tree peonies are really leafing out. Spirea some uh, ground. I think those are junipers. Here's another curtilus. This is a named variety. I think this is, I think this is Beth Evans. And we have our little guinea hens. I love these. Checkerboard. This is a fritillaria. And you can see there's a little bit of variety in them. And they do just kind of self-sew themselves around. Now, if you have bulb lilies and you have lily leaf beetle, start checking for them. I know they're out and they will, um, they will chomp on fritillaria also. Uh, I've got some aster here. I still have to cut back. I had most of it cut back, but not quite. So again, I left some of the stalks for the bees. I had something digging in this garden over the winter. I think it might have been a squirrel. I think he was digging up my hyacinths because there's no hyacinths in this section. And tree peonies. And then spirea. And I've got a lot of wild violet in this bed, too. So there's blue and white. You should see them there. I leave them in the garden. Violets are one of the host plants for the fritillaria, frit not sorry, fritillary butterflies. And then I've got this border. This is a boulder border. This this bo this bed needs some work. I haven't quite figured out what it's going to be. I also had voles get in it, and they ate almost everything in this end one year, except for the that's giant fleece flower in the middle. That'll get to be about five feet tall or more. That actually looks like garlic mustard. I've got to get that pulled. And then we have some little bulbs. I was planting some of the miniature daffodils in here last year. Oh, see, they're, they've gotten mud. So I was thinking I might, and colchicums. So this is going to be my colchicum bed. So the colchicums send their leaves up now. And then the leaves will go dormant by like oh, early June. And then sometime in late August, September, October is when the culture comes flower. So I think this is gonna be my culture come bad. This is a cool native plant. This is rattlesnake master. And this needs well-drained soil. So they put gravel around for the to set up the boulders so I actually planted the rattlesnake master in that gravelly stuff and they've done okay 
Actually, the ones that are in more gravel are doing better. They did bloom for me last year. Hi, Molly. And then this bed, I had some issues at the end of the year with some foxtail grass and some quack grass and stuff coming in. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this bed. It needs an overhaul. I haven't been happy with it. Um, I didn't want to put a lot of perennials in because I really like the boulders. But it just hasn't been working. So I'm going to work on reworking that one. And I've got a mix of some perennials in here, some iris, some variegated iris. Um, there's daylilies in here. This is Thermops. Thermopsis, I think, is that is a native. That's that's gonna be a yellow flower. Well, and then we've got some goldenrod in there that I didn't plant. Um, that's a Carl Forrester grass. But yeah, this this bud does need some work. Anyway, I thought it'd be fun just to get some spring color in and show you guys around the front of the house. All right. Have a great, have a great day.